Welcome back to Solar Chats with Dave. I'm Aaron and I'm here with the Point Zero Energy founder and owner, Dave. Today, let's talk about inverter efficiency. When I go to a website and I look at different portable power stations, it'll give an efficiency for the inverters. What does that mean? Well, this inverter here is 90% efficient, but that's its maximum. When you're pulling a certain load on it, it'll be 90% efficient. Other times it can be a lot lower, like under 50% efficient. Just to be clear then, does that equate to a 10% loss if it's 90% efficient? Maybe we should go into a little bit more detail about that efficiency. There's essentially two efficiencies in the inverter. One is the conversion efficiency, which is just converting the power. The other one is called a no load power draw. So if you turn your inverter on and you have zero load on it, it's still gonna be using power just to power itself. And so you kind of combine the both of those and you get the total efficiency. To recap then, no load power draw is the power that this inverter takes just to run. That's correct. And that's one of the things that most people don't even tell you about. So if you look at inverters, they'll very rarely tell you what that no load power draw is. You don't know what the real efficiency of your inverter is other than at that maximum point. That seems like a pretty big deal. Why is that important for people to understand? It actually is very important and I'm surprised that it's not a detail that's given out more because it can range anywhere from 10 watts to over 100 watts of no load power draw. If an inverter has a high no load power draw, what does that mean for someone who's going to use it one hour versus 24 hours or long term? If you calculate the amount of power wasted in that no load power draw, if it's 100 watts, in one day it's using up 2400 watt hours of power. That's more than most power stations have in battery storage. It also means you have to replace all that power with more solar panels. Is no load power draw a common specification on a company's website or how would someone go about finding it? It's actually very uncommon to list the no load power draw. We list it on ours because ours is really low and we always focus on that, but most companies don't list what their no load power draw is. So you're gonna have to contact that company and find out. And if they don't know what it is, that's kind of a bad sign. Not an ideal situation. Right. Are there ways to mitigate the effects of no load power draw with a power safe mode or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, in fact, most inverters have a really high no load power draw. They will have a power save option. What this does is when you have no load on your inverter, it will shut off. And then every so many seconds, it'll turn on to see if there's a load there. Now this has benefits of saving your battery if you have no load, but it has downfalls too. For example, if you have a system like this and you go plug something small into it, like your phone to charge, it's not gonna work. Cause it won't detect that load okay. and it'll just turn on and off and on and off and just cycle. What if you have a high load plugged into the system? So if you have a high enough load for it to detect it, it'll turn on and it'll run, but you still have that no load power draw. So say it's a 100 watt load you put on there, you still are burning the 200 extra watts of that no load, so it's still extremely inefficient. You're a lot better off getting a no load power draw that's lower. Dave, what does Point Zero Energy do to address no load power draw? We take no load power draw very seriously. In fact, about three years ago, we were developing a system and we were getting really close to releasing it, but in our testing, we found the no load power draw was 60 watts. And for us, that was too high. And because of that, we totally canceled the whole system. After that, we came out with the Titan, which has a no load power draw of 15 watt. We don't want them to go out and get their system, and then all of a sudden they're like, well, why is my battery dead after one day of running almost nothing? Well, thanks Dave for helping me and our consumers understand better what efficiency is in an inverter. I hope you learned something as well as I did, and we'll see you next time on our Solar Chats with Dave.